After a long time, uh, I've come back again with certain discussion on tube failure. In this video, I'm going to discuss about creep. Now, creep uh, is something when you are working in a boiler and when we talk about the degradation of the tube health, right? And uh, we need to understand creep. So basically, in this video, my target would be to explain what is creep. You know, in, uh, about creep, uh, if I ask what is creep, many uh, times I get this answer that it is a, a deformation due to high temperature, uh, stress under high temperature. Now, uh, that is not exactly true. Yeah, temperature plays an important role here, but uh, creep is not caused by temperature, high temperature. It is uh, affected by high temperature, definitely, but not caused by it. So if I see the definition of creep, it basically says that it is a uh, it's a time dependent permanent deformation uh, and uh, under a long term stress, continuous long term stress. But the stress is well below the uh, below the yield point, right? Now when we talk about permanent deformation, you know uh, the first thing we it comes to our mind. If we remember from our uh, mechanical engineering days, uh, the stress versus strain curve, right? So there is a yield point stress uh, below which uh, whatever strain or deformation will take place will be elastic deformation. It's not permanent, temporary deformation. The stress is removed, the uh, deformation will be also removed. But when we say elastic deformation, that is the permanent deformation, it usually happens when the stress level is beyond the yield stress point, right? But here, the stress limit even below the yield point can lead to a permanent deformation or elastic deformation, particularly if it is a long-term stress, right? So let us take a look at a, at a, at a tube component. Now, if I if I take a very close look, that means if I take a you know some electron uh, electronic microscope scan of this tube, I'm going to find that this tube metal is made of multiple grain structures, right? So there is number of grains here, multiple grains, and all these grains are having grain boundaries. Naturally, they are uh, connected with the grain boundaries. Now these are the weak points. The grain boundaries are the weak points. Now if this tube is naturally when it is working and is working for a long term, it is under continuous stress, right? It's a long term continuous stress. When that happens, uh, there are certain permanent voids occurs between the grain boundaries. So we can say intergranular voids like this, right? So these are permanent voids. Now when the stress is removed, these voids will remain. If I, if I, if I want to give you an example, uh, uh, it's maybe it's not directly related, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, there are certain tribes. Uh, one such tribe is this Kayan uh, Lauri tribe of uh, Myanmar, where they, the girls, the women folk, they used to wear the, the neck rings, right? Right from the childhood, they wear a number of neck rings. And as they grow older, the, they just go on adding this number of rings. Right, so uh, an adult woman will look something like this. As you can see, the, the neck length has increased incredibly, right, abnormally. In fact, the, it, it is a measure of their beauty. The longer the neck is, the more beautiful the woman is, right? Now, if I, if I see the, the X-ray vision of this, uh, the vertebra part, the neck part, uh, you're going to find one thing that yes, particularly the shoulder blade has been pressed down. So that's why the neck looks longer. But also between the vertebrates, the gaps are a little bit increased, right? Now this is happening because it's, it's being continuously stretched. And you can, you can correlate this with the multiple grains. If they are continuously under stress, between the grain boundaries, the gaps are forming, right? Now that is what creep is caused by a long-term stress. Now if I go back to the definition, 
it's also time dependent that means longer the time more would be this plastic deformation now to understand this if i need to see a regular clip curve let me uh, at this point tell you that uh, this curve is for only those metallurgies which has got the strength to work in clip right uh, usually at a temperature in excess of 370 degrees centigrade or 400 degrees uh, 400 degrees centigrade let us say 720 degree fahrenheit uh, the creep actually starts right in carbon steel and carbon steel doesn't have any strength against creep so you have to have some alloying element added to it for example the one which we use is the chromium molybdenum and vanadium in some cases this are usually adding the crip resistance crip strength it is increasing the crip strength in this metal right so these are called low alloy steels which we are using for the super heaters reheaters and such of course 304h and 31 347h uh, these are the two stainless steel metallurgies are also being used nowadays particularly for the supercritical boilers but in general you are going to find the the components which are working under crip regime temperature that is in the range of above 400 degrees centigrade they will have some chrome moly vanadium type of steel right i am not going to talk in detail about the metallurgy here at this point let us understand what crip is so as you can see it is a stress uh, time versus deformation curve right and in this particular curve initially you see this is a rapid deformation it is uh, almost elastic range but afterwards the plastic deformation start taking place initially the the rate of deformation against time is a little faster these are called the transit transition zone creep that is the primary creep after that it becomes much more steady right and it works for a long time in a steady state this is called the secondary part of the creep after which the tertiary creep initiates and then very fast it reaches to the failure portion now here two things are required to be understood any component which is working in the creep regime temperature must have a resistance against creep so the metallurgy should be suitable second thing if it is working in a creep regime temperature it has got a defined life period t this t can actually be calculated pretty much accurately in hours right i am going to show you how it is being done but this t is the time or the life period of this component which is working under creep regime temperature right and if this temperature under which it is being designed is exceeded during the operation right what happens is the clip curve changes and what changes significantly is the time period if you see how the scripts are being developed right so if i if i just follow a clip curve like this at uh, a different time interval there are certain uh, pre understood pre determined condition which is well understood right based on the temperature and stress the component is designed right it uh, it is going to uh, follow a predictable course of creep deformation right after certain time so initially the condition of this uh, if i see the microstructure it will be the general microstructure ferrite perlite type of microstructure right with the various grains and grain boundaries after a certain time this microstructure if i again see the microstructure i will find some isolated creep voids forming this creep voids are going to get more in number as the time goes by and they will orientate uh, one after another it's called orientation of creep voids and after that again after certain predictable time period this creep voids are going to get you know uh, connected with each other after getting aligned with each other it's going to get connected with each other it's called the coalescence of creep voids and this is basically a micro crack forming within the grain boundary grain structures right this micro crack in certain period of time will lead to a macro crack and then after that immediately after that there will be a 
failure. Now, this also, uh, uh, as I told you, the time, the total time period can be calculated in hours. So this can be done by one way of doing it is the following uh, the L uh, Larson and Miller parameter equation, LMP equation. Now this Larson and Miller parameter uh, equation is like what you can see. LMP is equal to degree F plus 460, which is the absolute temperature in Rankine's. That multiplied by C is a constant plus log T to the best 10. This T is the time period in hours divided by 1000. Now this LMP can be found from uh, a different metal chart, right? Uh, under a certain stress and under a certain temperature, if the component is designed, it will have a definite LMP value for that component. Right? C for the alloy steel, low alloy steel and carbon steel, what we use, uh, T11, T22, T91, such metallurgy, it is taken as 20, the value of C. Now, you can understand that if under which the, the temperature under which it was designed, if the temperature exceeds during the operation, for whatever reason, for scale formation, for improper operation, or whatever reason, if the metal temperature is increasing, right? C is a constant. So what is going to decrease? LMP is a value fixed for that component, designed for that work, right? So what is going to go down? The T is going to go down. The life period is going to go down. And remember, it is not linear. It will be an exponential function. It is in logarithmic function, right? it goes down exceedingly fast. For uh, example, I can tell you, if uh, uh, it's also mentioned in the National Board uh, of Boiler uh, uh, Literature, that if the metal temperature increases by 60 degrees Fahrenheit, it may happen at times, right? It's a constant load uh, condition. If it is exceeding by 60 degree Fahrenheit, which comes to around 30, degree centigrade, 28, 30 degree, 32 degree centigrade, right? So if the metal temperature increases by 60 degree Fahrenheit, 90% of the creep life will be gone, right? So it is a very, very important thing to understand. Now, this will also help us to understand one more thing. You know, uh, IBR states that uh, every component which is working at a temperature in excess of 400 degree centigrade, should undergo a remnant life assessment, right? So what is remnant life assessment? So let us say I'm having a component designed for a creep curve like this, which is having a life period of, let us say T, which is usually 38, 40 years. Now, regulation 391A, which is for the RLA, it says that after one lakh hour or 20 years, whichever comes first of service, this component should undergo a remnant life assessment. In remnant life assessment, there are various tests which are being done, uh, amongst which, which is the most important, is the replication study, where a component microstructure replica is taken, it is a non-destructive study, uh, replica is taken and then it's studied under a microscope. Right, and it, here we understand the microstructure changes on whatever the creep uh, deformation condition at that point of time. So let us say uh, this is where the 20 years is uh, over, and we have to go through the RLA assessment, right? And the microstructure here at this point suggests this condition where we are having a coalescence uh, orientation of creep voice. Whereas you see in the original curve was showing the orientation would take place much later on. That means this particular component for whatever temperature it is exposed to is not going through the, this designated script curve. Rather it is following this script curve. And according to this script curve, the remnant life will be this much, not the one which is it is designed for. Right? So that is what RLA one way of understanding RLA is and a component which is exposed to a higher temperature than its design temperature is bound to fail before the life period is over. That is what we call the cliff failure or long-term overheating failure. 
in a boiler tube. Now, in a boiler tube, crib failure, if you, if you see there is a crib failure like this, then one thing will be sometimes seen that the, the failure uh, component, the failed part, will not have much bulging and it will have a, a, a thick lip fracture, right? So, because the plastic deformation has not taken place too much, the fractured lip will be thick lip. It will be definitely a longitudinal stress fracture but it will be a thick lip fracture, right? So most commonly, that is what we see in a long-term overding failure. It indicates that this component is definitely been exposed to a little higher, not much, little higher temperature than it is designed for. And this little higher makes the long-term overding failure and defecation very, very difficult. You know, where the temperature is very high, it can be easily identified that, yeah, the temperature is very high and it can uh, undergo uh, overheating failure. Usually in such cases, is a short-term overheating failure. But if the temperature is just a little high, sometimes it will not be even identified and understood easily by the operating people, right? So then it becomes very, very difficult to identify this kind of a condition and, and predict that such kind of thing might happen. It can be, yes, there are... Uh, you know, some uh, methods that we usually discuss during uh, uh, the uh, such kind of training workshop, but these are all detailed discussion in operation. But yeah, one more thing is that in, in long-term overheating failure, because the temperature is higher than what it is designed for, the skin temperature pretty often uh, 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 close, comes very close to the oxidation temperature. As a result, you are going to find uh, uh, some kind of a oxidation cracks. But one thing is there that if it is a, it is a crit failure, then the microstructure will very clearly suggest that yeah, such kind of a nucleation of uh, voids, orientation of voids and, and uh, coalescence of voids have taken place which has led to the failure. Microstructure is a very, very definitive identification method of a crit failure. Right? And as I was telling you, the oxidation, these are of course the physical uh, uh, nature of the, of the component, failed component. And it's, uh, sometimes you might find, sometimes you might know, right? you might find this kind of a, what we call an elephant height structure because of the oxidation of the, of the skin. Right? Such kind of an elephant height structure can be seen on the skins. Right? So that is what long term overting or creep failure is. And every boiler operation engineer or inspection or maintenance engineer must understand what causes creep any component which is working in a creep regime temperature one should be very very careful about this right that will be all for today thank you very much bye bye